Okay, turn the volume up just a little bit. All right, now we are recording. So those of our, our announcements and who we are and all of that good stuff. And also this Saturday is the third Saturday. I'm a little discombobulated. This room has been cleared out to be painted. So it's just me this morning, no props. And I don't know where anything is. This Saturday, 9.30 a.m. What is that? I don't know what day that is in December. It is the fall book study. So be there with us. We are in Priscilla Schreier's book, Discerning the Voice of God, How to Know When God is Speaking. It's, and it's not, a, I had this question, it's not a book study for women. It is a book study for souls. Get in here. Get, just get right on in the book study. Order the book on Amazon. You will not have any question after reading this book that you know when the Lord is talking. The book is good. So join us this Saturday, 9.30 a.m. Thank you, Linda, for putting that information right in there. All right. All right, you got your Bibles, your pens, your pads, coffee, tea, something to write with. And I, I'm, 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 I love to study the word of the Lord. So when I say get your Bibles, your pads, your pens, coffee, something to write with, do that. When we are tracking along like this, before you know it, that word is getting in you. You write us, let me give you just some hints, some tips on growth. I think I said this a while ago. Um, but when we take a scripture, we talk about it. I give you a little commentary on it. And we pray. You write that scripture down. Read it. Over it. Pray over it. Study it. Chop it up. Ask God's questions about it until the next Wednesday. Pray it for yourself. Pray it for your loved ones. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Next Wednesday, you do the same thing. It's not about quantity. It's about the quality of studying it. And you are having spiritual growth. It's happening right before your eyes. We, and I say that because we've covered some territory. We've done John 1, 2, and 3, Ephesians, Colossians, Galatians. We're in the book of Matthew. Once we get through Christmas, we're going to pick back up in the gospel. The gospel of John, the gospel of Matthew, we're going to pick back up January 1st, chapter 6. So maybe that will be a, a, a new year. I, I don't like the word resolution. A new year um, promise to yourself that you're going to study and grow. We'll get you a good study Bible, get you a tablet, a pen, a highlighter, and January 1st, you know, set your alarm clock for every Wednesday morning, um, the first Wednesday in January, not January 1st, and we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6. So come on and grow with us. Come on and grow with us. All right. We left off this month, this entire month, our theme is going to be because he was born. If you get a moment, if you get a moment, go to the YouTube channel or the website, because now they, they are uploaded at the same time, no more delay, and look at the Saturday teaching. The topic has been the same because he was born, and it's on the Ephesians chapter one. Beautiful lesson. The lesson was for me. The lesson taught me. The lesson, I, I may have given it, but I was just an instrument. The lesson, I want to go back and look at it again. That's how rich that lesson was. So YouTube channel, website, however you want to get to it, it's in the Facebook post. Saturday's teaching session was awesome. Same topic, same chapter. But we went through more. Of, I think we did 14 verses of Ephesians chapter 1. So today, 
Still, same thing, because he was born. Last week, we did verse three. This week, we're going to do verse four. But I did want to throw a quick plug in there for Saturday's lesson, because that thing was good. That thing was good to my bones. All right. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Ms. Rhodes. Good morning. Thank you all for joining us. All right. If you have everything you need, your pen, your Bible, let's get going. So last week, and it's hard not to go into what we, just one verse, and it blew our minds. It stated, this was last week, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In Christ. I could just go right into that, but I'm not. We did that last week. Verse four. Just. Okay. Now, your blessed father has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. We talked, we talked Saturday about. In Christ is how we get this every spiritual blessing. What does that mean to be in Christ? Then he goes, just as, just as, just as marvelous, just as loving, just as gracious, just as important, just as profound as it was for you to be blessed with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ, he chose us in him. Saturday, we talked about why is it in him so many times. Go look at the lesson. Before the foundations of the world. <clears throat> that we would be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's talk about it. Every time I see this, it says what it says, but there's a more loving perspective, okay? Now, just like he blessed you in Christ, he also chose us in him. When did he choose me? Before the foundations of the world. I was reading that. We talked about that Saturday, what that meant. This scripture right here, if anybody suffered with rejection, feeling unloved, feeling like um, you had to perform for God's approval. You had to be good enough for God's approval. In my Bible and in yours, if it's the same Bible, there's one Bible. He chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Lots of theology about that. We don't have time to get into it. But let's just think about what it's saying. So, as much as I'm, I'm put this on me, as much as I sinned before I came to Christ and the sin I committed when I came to Christ, let's be real about it. I was chosen before the foundations of the world, before my mom and daddy ever was born. How about that? You were chosen. For what? For what? So not only did he choose me, and you know, we talked about every spiritual blessed and heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him, you know, he was able to do that in his son. We talked about why. On Saturday, 
We're not getting to the Father unless we go through the Son because of the Son's sacrifice. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, three different roles. Christ's role was redemption of man to pay the price that God the Father set for breaking kingdom structure. The wages of sin is death. There is no sin in the kingdom. The wages of sin is death. God the Father created the structure. He created us, the kingdom. Okay, One God, three persons. One God, three different roles. One Cheryl, mama, wife, nurse, minister, different roles, but one Cheryl. So God the Son's job was redemption. So everything God does for us will be in him. Because if you don't believe that he paid the price for our sin so that we'll reconcile back to God, God is like, I just ain't got nothing for you. You know, it's going, the sun going to rise, the sun going to set, the rain going to fall on all my creation. But when it comes to my children, it will be in him that you get to me. Because it was God the Son that paid the price. Paid the price for the structure God the Father put in place. Okay? So, just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. I don't know about y'all, but that makes me feel real special in love. We down here dealing with the rejection of man, the approval of man, being received and loved by man. And there is a God, my, the God, let me say that, the God of all the universe chose you before the foundations of the world were even laid. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel kind of special to know it, to love it, to walk with it, to believe in it. And it does something inside of me that make. and see, if he chose me before the foundations of the world, he had to already know I was ratchet, special, gonna mess up. And as mankind, we have the, um, I want to say audacity, but I didn't, I didn't want to be that strong this early in the morning. Not to forgive, respect, or love each other. And here's a God that knew all of us were going to do something, say something, or even be something ugly. He chose you anyway before the foundations of the world. Whenever you have a hard time, so, so not only does that little comment bust up the spirit of rejection, what it also ought to do is that, God, if you can choose me and love me like that before the foundations of the world, and I have a heart, I hold stuff against people, I got a hard time forgiving. So, Father, I'm going to need God, the Holy Spirit that lives in me, the third person of the Trinity, to help me love and forgive like you. Now, if you get out the way, God can do it inside of you. I ain't telling you something. I, read. I did read that, but I also know that because there are times that because of hurt and pain, I have to say, God, be real big in me because me, don't want to have nothing to do with that person. Me can just walk on like I don't even see him. But that's not you. That's not what you want your kingdom inherited children to act like. So God that's in me, forgive him and help me be like you. Because you chose my raggedy behind before the foundations of the world and I know I'm raggedy. Okay, so let this, and see, see how that look, 
piece of scripture this long speaks so much. All right, anyway, just as he chose me before the foundations of the world, <laughs> why? That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God chose you to be right, even though you was going to be wrong before the foundations of the world. God chose you to be right, even though you was going to be wrong before the foundations of the world. He chose you not only because he knew you needed salvation, okay, but he also chose us to be holy and blameless before him in love. You might say, Father, how am I going to be holy and blameless before you in love? Well, holy and blameless before him in love. Well, first of all, it's not going to be the unredeemed me because the unredeemed me is sinful and needs to be blamed for everything because I'm guilty. But the redeemed, the unredeemed me, that's who the, un, but the redeemed me, redeemed by what? The blood of Jesus Christ. I can be holy and blameless before him. And all of this is because of love. The author had to just put that on there, in love. In love. When I study and meditate on the love of God, it makes human love look like trash, y'all. I'm sorry, it just does. It makes this little stuff we call in love on earth look like trash, okay? Because this is a God that loved you before he created you or the world, chose you, to have every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, to be holy and blameless, although you was going to be born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and ratchet. Okay? In love. Don't get it twisted. All of this is in Christ. Okay? So verses three, between verses three and four, in Christ is one, two, we see that repeated twice in two verses because we need to understand it's all in him through Christ, because of Christ, because he was born. Because he was born before the foundations of the world, I was chosen to be holy and blameless, to have every access to every spiritual blessing. And then he just kisses the end of verse four and says, in love. That makes human love look like trash. I would rather have this supernatural love surrounding me than anything else. And when I think about it like that, in my spirit, man, I can have joy Christmas time and not have one gift because he was born. Because he was born, look at all I had. You talk about a Christmas gift. Baby, you can keep them little fuzzy socks. I got the love of Jesus Christ. And he loved me before I even knew, knew me. He loved me before I even sinned. He chose me to be holy and blameless. That, that holy and blameless is a, a metaphor used during the times of the law that it would be a, a immaculate sacrifice without no blemish. So 
using that type of terminology, terminology, using that type of terminology, even being in the metaphor of their times, holy and blameless, immaculate sacrifice before him in love. Wow. That's how God set you up. That's how he set you up. That's how he wants us in Christ. That's how we are in Christ. Why? Why can we be holy, should be holy and without blame before him in love? No merit of your own. No work of your own. How? Because you're in him. By his blood, by his sacrifice, by his love, and by your surrender. And belief. Belief is going to precede surrender. So, with that said, work on a deep, intimate, relationship closeness with the lover of your soul relationship over religious activity get in there with jesus relationship over religious activity religious actions okay religious circumstance religious can be religion can be bondage Relationship is always freedom. Freedom to love. God says, worship me in spirit and in truth. He wants us to be right on the inside, not just do right on the outside. We studied that all through chapter five of Matthew, where the religious leaders wanted them to do right. God came in and retaught the law. He said, no, no, no. This is what it meant because it is meant to help you be right on the inside, in your heart, in your mind. You be right, you'll do right. But all the religious leaders were worried about was them doing right, obey the law, do right, function in it. So chapter five lit us on fire. I hope you join us first Wednesday in January so that we can begin, begin chapter six of Matthew. All right. But as far as today's lesson, I, I pray that four has blessed you. Verse four has blessed you as it did me. Um, as we continue to read about the redemption of Christ, because he was born, we would not have this beautiful stuff that I'm talking about. But verse four, I hope it just expanded in, in, a, in another way that you could see the depth of it spiritually, that you were chosen before the foundations of the world, that you should be holy and blameless before God in love. Love is a caveat for all. Why are you? Because I love you, because I created you, because you mind. Our job is to believe that the second person of the Trinity died for our sins. And because we do that, that's why I keep saying all the way through, all the way through Ephesians 1, in him, in him, in him. Your job is to believe. And once you get in him, oh baby, he has all of these beautiful things for us to have in love. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you this morning for Ephesians. We want to thank you this morning for this living word. We want to thank you, dear God, for Christ. We want to thank you for his birth. Father, his birth and his death was the best thing that could have ever happened to us. Master, right now, there is so much that I'm praying this word will do 
inside of everybody listening to you. I pray, dear God, first of all, this message will save, this message will heal. I pray, dear God, that this message will demolish rejection and and not being accepted or feeling like they need to be accepted. I pray that this world would demolish those feelings of rejection. I pray that this word would expand the revelation of love, dear God. I pray that this word will show us how to love. If you could love us like this, please help us to love others like you loved us not because of who we would do or who we are. You loved us because you chose to. Help us to love like you, forgive like you, speak truth like you, live in truth like you. Father, we thank you for choosing us. We thank you, Father. We don't want to get this season twisted. We want to pray right now in the name of Jesus all of the attention and focus on gifts and parties or either the opposite direction, depression of who's gone and passed away or you're not booed up or whatever comes in this season, the extreme of too much and wrong focus and the extreme of not enough and wrong focus. God, this season, you are the extreme. This season of Advent, this season of expectancy, where would we be without you, God? Where would we be without the birth of the second person of the Trinity, who always was, and then he came to be for us? So we thank you. Because he was born, we have hope. We have a chance. We can be counted holy and blameless in love because he was born. And as I continue, because the next generation, God is just, mm, may they get the revelation of how special they are because you love them. Because you love them. May our children's 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 children walk in the power and the knowledge and the revelation of your love and who you created them to be. So not only, God, are we praying, they call you savior, master, king, but they have a keen revelation of who they are in you because of love. And they won't look for it nowhere else. That's what we speak over our generations. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. So whatever emotion that we may be having in this season, is they can come in like blood, they can be heavy. We are human. My prayer for you, is that they don't control. Have them, but don't let them be a God. Have the emotion, have the thought. I miss my dad. I miss my grandparents. I miss our Christmas, Christmas traditions growing up. God knows I do. I'm trying to create my own with these people that live in this house with me. So let's not let any other emotion feeling a thought, although we're going to have them, but don't let them take over. Don't let them become, become a God and don't let them steal your joy. There's joy to the world. Our Lord has come and let earth receive her king. Okay? It can be, but it cannot control. The only emotion I want controlling us, especially in this season, is thanks to God that the son was born. The king came. And when I read these scriptures, 
I'm reminded of how much I need it in the name of Jesus. So be with us this Saturday for our book study. And if you are watching or have ever watched and you're feeling in your heart or even thinking in your mind, I want to know more about God. Well, I invite you to know more about God. I invite you to have a relationship. He invites you. And if you would just grace me for 30 more seconds, you know you need a savior. You know you're missing something. You believe the gospel of Jesus Christ when you hear it. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I need you. I am keenly aware that I am a sinner and being the God of my own life has not been working out. Father, I want to invite you into my life and I believe you love me and I believe Jesus Christ died for my sin to redeem me, to save me so that I can live in eternity Father, with you. I need your Holy Spirit to come down on the inside of me and help me. I surrender, God. I surrender all to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And if you prayed that prayer sincerely, invited God in, but your belief in Jesus Christ, that he died for you, invited the Holy Spirit to take over your life, you're saved. Your next step is growth. Now you have to grow in the knowledge of your salvation. Okay? So you go to our website. It's in this link. You get in touch with me. I have many brothers and sisters in Christ that are pastors of church homes that are Bible-based, Bible teaching, where you can get baptized. You can have a church family and grow, and you continue to walk with us and grow. So if that's you, you just received the best Christmas gift ever, that salvation. And then you get in touch with me. I can put you in the hands of a pastor where you can continue to grow and get baptized. All right, y'all, have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful work day. Enjoy this, see, this Advent season, which is a season of expectancy. Because he was born, in the name of Jesus, bye-bye for now. And I need you to always remember, God is truly the lover of your soul. Bye-bye for now.